Hello. We're going to be looking at is um, tuples in C++ to support some of the work we've been doing in class. In mathematics, a tuple is just a bunch of numbers. A bu any, it could be anything. Moose, the number 3, green, 3.5. There are four items. You call it a four-tuple. Two items. We call it a two-tuple. John Doe, April 1st, 1990. It looks like it's somebody's name and date of birth. Five items. It's a five-tuple. In C++, same idea. The only problem is, in programming, the variables are all anonymous. They have no names. They only have values. So how do I get to the data? How do you access the data if it doesn't have a name? Can't say, hey, you. Well, what we have to do is, hey, get item zero. Get item number one. Get item number two. Get item number four. That's exactly how you do it. You just get item after item. We're going to look at the um, class name tuple. We're going to look at getting an item. We're going to look at the use of tie, make a tuple, and ignore. That's sufficient so you can like, work on the others independently, I think. First, uh, let's create and access a tuple. Keyword tuple that we're going to use. Angle bracket begins, angle bracket ends. You're going to need that as well. Next, when you make a tuple, you're going to use parentheses to fill it with yummy data. Next, to get a piece of data, you're going to use an angle bracket, and you're going to fill that with the number. Number zero, get me number one, zero, get me uh, one, get me two, dot, 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 get me the last one. Notice I say n minus one, because you include zero as n. And tell me the name of the tuple. What tuple do you want to get this from? That's basically it. Here's an example. I, first thing I'll do is pull in the library, um, prototypes and tuple. So I don't have to type STD. I'll use the namespace STD. Next, I'm going to create a variable called name. And I'm going to make it a tuple. And in my mind, it's going to have a first name. And in my mind, it's going to have a last name. And there's string. So I'll say string, comma, string. Notice this is a comment, slash, slash. Tuple. The variable name does not know that this is the first name. It does not know that this is the last name. There are no names here whatsoever. So now let's fill this with data. When I say make tuple, it'll take this string, and John, and the string doe, and put it inside name. So name has two pieces of data in it. What is it? Item 0 and item 1. That's it, item zero and item one. And they're both inside name. And you call it a tuple, a two tuple. Why two? Because there are two items. You want to print out the first one or item zero? You say get item zero from tuple name. Get item one from tuple name. If I want to change the data in the first item, first item, I say, all right, item zero, and in the tuple called name. In the tuple called name, change item one. So John Doe will become Bozo the Clown. If I go back a little bit, here's John Doe. John Doe will become Bozo the Clown. Here it is. Here's where we make John Doe. Here I print out John Doe. There's the before. Here we're changing it. We're changing John the Bozo and Doe to the Clown, and we're printing out the after picture. So you can see the before and after. So what have we done? We've created a tuple. We printed out the data in a tuple. We changed the tuple, and we displayed it again. 
or access it. Wouldn't it be nice if I didn't have to do anything as crazy as this? There's a lot of work over here. Remembering all of this. I'd like to clean up this code. Well, this would be nice to just tell C out, hey, C out, print up name, even though it's a tuple. Can we do that? Of course, otherwise you wouldn't see it here. I'm gonna overload the insertion operator. Notice out, this is really my shortcut for C out. It's an output stream, it's a reference. Next, this is the tuple I want to give it. I'll say anytime you see a tuple that has a string and a string in it, just give it to me right here. Give it to this function. Yes, folks, it is a function. So it will take the tuple T, get item zero, print it here. Well, put it here. It'll get item one from the tuple. There's T, the tuple, there's T. Place it here, put a comma in between them send it to the outstream and return outstream back to the caller. And it allows me to do beautiful code like this. I no longer have to do this stuff. Notice the main program is getting smaller and I think it's becoming more readable and friendly. Here it is becoming even friendlier. Let me go back. Notice it's two lines to say before and two lines to say after. Here we come here, I just put it on one line. Very, very readable. And I like that. Readability is good. Here's a larger picture of it. There's the um, output stream, um, the insertion operator being overloaded. Here's the main uh, function. And it, it, I think it's getting, the code is becoming cleaner. Much easier to look at. And hopefully you're learning how to use a tuple. Where's a tuple? There it is the tuple. So clean it up a bit more. I don't like the number zero because I don't know what numbers mean. They mean nothing to me. Six, what the heck does six mean? Six days, six dollars, six billion dollars, six cents. I have no idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that number zero and I'm going to give it a meaningful two initials FN for first name. I'm going to take the number one, give it a meaningful two initials and make it a constant. This will only work with a constant. So I'll say get the file name, put the number zero in here, but I don't have to think of zero. I can just think of FN, first name. Same here. Instead of me thinking of the number one, I think of last name. Makes my life, I think, easier. Here's the main code. Here we had a zero and a one, but we no longer have to say that. We now have code that says get first name from the name, Bozo. Get last name from name, the cloud, and set it equal to. I shouldn't say set it equal to. I should be more accurate. It's an assignment statement. It means make a copy of this thing or make it a copy of an address, a reference, and a, put it over on the left. Here's the top of my program. I'm going to extend it a little bit more because I don't like typing out the word tuple string string it's a lot of work and i get confused because i don't know what that means it's like a number so what i do is use type def and i give it something meaningful person type a person type so now look at my code a person type t a person type's got a last name and a person type has got a first name it's becoming i think readable so there's my code, a little bit more readable with person type, first name and last name. We can improve it just a hair more by taking make tuple, I think it's an improvement, it's, you could say not, and moving it here so I obviously only read in one line of code. A person name is John Doe. I don't have to look at two lines of code, just one line of code. I have my beautiful before and after statements here, and I have this now. Not bad. Now, what about pulling out data? I have a, I have a tuple, and I want to pull them out so difficultly with get zero, get one, get two. To that end, we have tie. It allows you to pull pieces of data out of the tuple. 
Sometimes you don't care about something, so you say, I ignore that piece of data. Ignore it. So here I picked a nice big tuple. Tuple, integer, string, char, double. It's a four tuple. One, two, three, four. And I call it fun, because I'm having fun. And I make a tuple, fill it with juicy data. Next, I create four variables integer, char, and double. Notice, integer, char, and double. I'm going to skip or ignore string. So I don't really bother creating a variable for it. So now I use the word tie. I say take fun, notice the assignment statement, and tie it, reference, well, put it into tie. Tie will take item zero, which is 46, and put the number 46 in age, skip Bob, put the letter A in zone, and put 2.718 in E. And that's how I can pull data out. Next, something really fun is what if I had thousands of tuples? All right, let's just deal with five. If I can deal with five, I can multiply that and make it thousands. First one's an integer, second one's a character. All right, maybe some sort of mapping, a code. Well, ignore the letter A for now. Coming to here, I say I is, I is zero, one, two, three, and four. I say make a tuple, give me the number I as an integer, take the letter A, add to it I. This will give me the letters A, B, C, D, and E. Why? Because if you look at the ASCII table, you'll see after the letter A comes A, B, C, D, and E, and they're all um, by counting. So that's what happens. I can use the I for that. Next, notice I put a red line here. I did that to indicate that this whole thing, it's not just the letter P. It's P bracket I, the index I is, let me erase that because it's looking really ugly. There we go, back to my highlighter. This is the variable. This whole thing is one variable. It is, and when I is zero, it's variable zero. It's, you can think of it as one thing. So it loads up P0, P1, P2, P3, P4. Next, I wanna print it out. So I say get, it's from, from PI0, PI0, notice it looks like a function here. And it is. Um, use the get function to go into PI and pull out item zero. Use the get function to go into PI and pull out item one and print them. And that's what you see here. Also notice the, the first is last and the last. The first is the last and the last is first. I changed the ordering of I here. Not easy to do in a regular for loop, but this loop does make, make life easier in that respect. As an exercise, consider taking the, um, this function and rewriting it so it works with this tuple and rewrite it so it works with this tuple. So you should end up having, if you take all this code and change it into one giant piece of code, um, you will end up having um, three, one, two, three overrides for the um, insertion operator. They look exactly alike, pretty much. They're boilerplates. If you found it useful, um, please uh, give it a thumbs up. Click like. Thank you.